The Battle of Gonzales was a battle fought on October 2, 1835, and would be the first battle of the Texas Revolution. In 1825, American colonist Green Dewitt was given permission to settle 400 families in Texas near the San Marcos and Guadalupe Rivers. The colony soon became a target for Native American tribes, and in July 1826, they would destroy the capital city, Gonzales. Dewitt negotiated peace treaties with the Caranqua and Tonkawa tribes, but would still have problems with the local Comanche tribes. Unable to spare military troops to protect the town, the region's political chief instead sent the settlers a six-pounder cannon. During the 1830s, the Mexican government wavered between Federalist and Centralist politics. As the pendulum swung sharply towards Centralism in 1835, several Mexican states revolted in June, and a small group of settlers in Texas used the political unrest as an excuse to rebel against customs duties in an incident known as the Anhuac Disturbances. The federal government responded by sending more troops to Texas. Public opinion was sharply divided as some communities supported the rebellion and some, including the city of Gonzales, declared their loyalty to Mexican President Antonio López de Santa Ana's centralist government. As the unrest spread, Colonel Domingo de Ucartechea, the commander of all Mexican troops in Texas, felt it was unwise to leave the residence of Gonzales with a weapon and requested the return of the cannon, and sent a corporal and five enlisted men to retrieve it. Many of the Texian settlers believed Mexican authorities were manufacturing an excuse to attack the town and eliminate the militia. In a town meeting, three citizens voted to hand over the gun to forestall an attack. The remainder, including Alcalde Andrew Ponton, voted to stand their ground. According to historian Stephen Hardin, the cannon became a point of honor and an unlikely rallying symbol. Gonzalez's citizens had no intention of handing over the weapon at a time of growing tensions. The soldiers were escorted from the town without the cannon. When Ugarthechea received word that the colonists refused to turn over the cannon, he sent Francisco de Castañeda and a hundred dragoons to retrieve it. Ugarthechea realized that given the tensions between the Texans and Santa Ana's centralist government, the slightest provocation might ignite hostilities. He therefore instructed Castañeda to use force if necessary, but to avoid open conflict if possible. The company rode out of San Antonio de Bayar on September 27, 1835, and headed for Gonzales. On September 29th, Castaneda's troops would reach the Guadalupe River on the opposite side of Gonzales, where they found their path blocked by high water and 18 militiamen, later called the Old 18. With no easy way to cross the river, Casañeda and his men made camp at the highest ground in the area, about 300 yards from the river. Three Texians hurried to bury the cannon, while others traveled to nearby communities to ask for assistance. By the end of the day, more than 80 men had arrived from Fayette and Columbus, Texas. Texian militia companies generally elected their own leaders, and the men, now gathered in Gonzales, invoked their right to choose their own captain rather than report to Albert Martin, captain of the Gonzales Texian Militia Company. John Henry Moore was elected leader with Joseph Wallace and Edward Burleson in second and third in command. In San Antonio de Bayar, Ugarthechea asked Dr. Lancelot Smither, a Gonzales resident, to go to Gonzales and help Cansaneda convince the settlers to follow the orders. When Smither arrived on October 1st, he met with militia captain Matthew Caldwell to explain that the soldiers meant no harm if the settlers would peacefully relinquish the cannon. Caldwell instructed Smither to bring Cansaneda to the town the following morning to discuss the matter. At roughly the same time, Moore called a war council, which quickly voted to initiate a fight. The Texians dug up the cannon and mounted it on cartwheels. In the absence of cannonballs, they gathered metal scraps to fill the cannon. James C. Neal, who had served in an artillery company during the War of 1812, was given command of the cannon. He gathered several men, including Almer and Dickinson, also a former U.S. Army artilleryman. 
Together, they formed the first artillery company of the Texian army. As the Texians made plans for an attack, Casaneda learned from a Cachada Indian that about 140 men were gathered in Gonzales and more were expected. The Mexican soldiers began searching for a safe place to cross the river and by nightfall on October 1st, they made camp seven miles upriver from their previous spot on a contested piece of land belonging to colonist Ezekiel Williams. On the night of October 1st, the Texian troops crossed the west bank of the Guadalupe River and marched upriver towards Casaneda's new camp. A dog barked at their approach, alerting the Mexican soldiers who began to fire. The noise caused one of the Texan horses to panic and throw his rider, who suffered a bloody nose. Moore and his men hid in the thick trees until dawn. As they waited, some of the Texians raided a nearby field and snacked on watermelon. Due to the darkness and fog, Mexican soldiers could not estimate how many men had surrounded them, and they withdrew 300 yards to a nearby bluff. At around 6 a.m., the Texans emerged from the trees and began firing at the Mexican soldiers. Lieutenant Gregory Pierres counterattacked with 40 mounted soldiers. The Texans fell back to the trees and fired a volley, injuring a Mexican private. According to some accounts, the cannon fell out of the wagon upon the shot. Unable to safely maneuver among the trees, the Mexican horsemen returned to the bluff. As the fog lifted, Casaneda sent Smither to request a meeting between the two commanders. Smither was promptly arrested by the Texians, who were suspicious of his presence among the Mexican soldiers. Nevertheless, Moore agreed to meet Casaneda. Casaneda asked why he and his men had been attacked without provocation, and Moore replied that the Texians were fighting to keep their cannon and to uphold the Constitution of 1824. Casaneda then assured Moore that he himself was a Federalist and personally opposed the politics of Santa Ana. He added that he had no wish to fight the colonists, he only had orders to reclaim the cannon. Moore then invited Casaneda to join the Texans in their fight for the Federal Constitution of 1824. Casaneda explained that as a soldier, he was obligated to follow his orders, whether or not he agreed with the politics behind them. At that point, negotiations broke down, and the two commanders returned to their respective units. As Moore returned to camp, the Texians raised a homemade white banner with an image of a cannon painted in black in the center over the words, Come and take it. The fighting resumed, and Casaneda, finding himself outnumbered and outgunned, ordered a withdrawal towards Bayar. In his report to Ugarte Chea, Casaneda stated that, Since the orders from our lordship were for me to withdraw without compromising the honor of Mexican arms, I did so. Despite Casaneda's effort to avoid war, the so-called Battle of Gonzales, which was really only a brief skirmish, marked a clear break between American colonists and the Mexican government. And two days after the battle, Austin wrote to the San Felipe de Austin Committee of Public Safety, War is declared. Public opinion has proclaimed it against a military despotism. The campaign has commenced. News of the skirmish, originally called the fight at Williams Place, spread throughout the United States, encouraging many adventurers to come to Texas and assist the fight against Mexico. Newspapers referred to the conflict as the Lexington of Texas, and this skirmish would officially begin the Texas Revolution. <laughs>